Now let me explain the next part of Ata. Following Chujado Island, as you saw before, I gained some knowledge about flying around here in apartment. Experience was gained. So the next part was really more challenging. I tried something I hadn't done before and this video is the result. It was a promotional video for an apartment complex just after its completion. It's really an experience of confidence now. I went up the apartment and I thought, will I succeed in going through that small gap? Uh, I passed the gap precisely looking at the X mark at the Google screen. I start to dive at the intro of this video. It allowed me to capture dynamic footage like this. Something you should know is that the DJI Avatar camera, when shooting in a bright daylight, honestly captures in crisp 4K quality. In a way, this can be seen as an advantage of Avatar. It struggles a bit in a low light conditions, but in well-lit environments, the quality is quite decent, almost as good as GoPro. However, it really suffers in darkness. And you can see that I'm going uh, through that Pilote. And I think I could do this because in confidence with a lot of experience in another apartment uh, flight. And I went back and then this was possible. I was like understanding this kind of signal uh, things uh, in a Wi-Fi and interference free environment within apartment complex before occupancy, understanding how signals penetrate through gaps and spaces. And once you understand this, it's allowed me to fly in for such flights. Of course, after passing through about four to five or marked buildings, the signal started weakening and trying to disconnect. Well, that's when I was flying, I paying attention to the yellow gauge at the uh, Google screen. So anyway, I gained more confidence. I started doing flying like this, passing through gaps and spaces a lot. And I really understood the new usage of Avada. Practicing fly around these apartments, gaining more confidence, I ventured into shooting footage places like this test and waterfall. Uh, the footage includes uh, flying through gaps, valleys, and canyons showcasing the possibilities. Moreover, flying far beyond like around 2 kilometers outside, uh, going uh, out and coming back, thanks to my experience with my DJI FPB, I knew that the DJI Vata could handle such distances. So I sent it out about 2 kilometers away and captured footage and returned. The result video is one of that shot that Sorexon does in waterfall. Even when flying through this canyon, I was confident that above, being above, the signal would bounce back and I wouldn't experience signal interruptions. Moreover, with the Nevada, even descending like Mebawi waterfall, uh, there will be no signal loss on the opposite side. So I confidently flew through such canyons. Of course, I had done two reconnaissance missions to capture this video. Before the rain came, I went to practicing flying through the canyon. This was the practice I did with DJI Avatar. With the DJI FPV, you can never venture so deep into the canyon. The FPV is larger and it has propellers, making the chances of crash much higher. However, Avatar has propeller guards and it moves a bit more slowly, so I believe it can fly through these uh, intricate in spaces with precision. Therefore, I think it was possible to capture this footage because of the sense of Avatar can fly more precisely. I think this feeling of being able to fly more precisely with Avatar allow me to capture this footage. You can see me a definite improvement like this. Uh, with that confidence, I filmed this testing waterfall episode and the Mabewi artificial waterfall episode. During this time, I learned certain things from flying in various locations. As you can see, I flew from the top of this waterfall. And this is the observation deck at the top of the waterfall. In this situation, below the waterfall, there's a cliff. And on the top, on the opposite side, there's nothing. In such cases, the signal reflects continuously. So it kept going down and turning the shaded area. But Avatar maintained it in a good signal, while DJI FPB lost its signal. These experiences highlighted the difference in the signal preference between OcuSync 3.0 and the DJI PB OcuSync 3.0 Plus in DJI Avatar. Through these experiences, the Avatar has started to explore more intricate flight paths. And while the DJI PB with a slightly narrower field of view is more suitable for cinematic shots with a cooler vibe. 
So once you understand the limitation of each FPV, you can maximize the footage, making it possible to shoot almost to extreme. Through experiences like these, my understanding of signals has thus deepened, gradually expanding my perspective. With this knowledge, I attempted indoor flights in a model house earlier, so if the wooden structure allows signal penetration, as demonstrated by the windowed uh, indoor flight, I could understand that the signal can penetrate indoor spaces. So 400 meter, flying from the opposite side of the island 400, 400 meters away, I could enter through this abandoned building and perform inter flights like this. This experience from flying in a model house enabled me to perform such flights. So if you watch my channels continuously, you will see that how much signal reception you can get up to a certain extent through indoor exploration, outdoor reconnaissance, and returning to me, you can witness scenes of flying from the other side to to here, entering and exiting the space. So uh, when you see things like this, uh, you'll be able to think, wow, signals can reach that extent. That's what the video of the abandoned buildings is Kagoro Island represents. And the video where I feel like uh, DJ FPV in Kagoro Island. The best thing about DJ Avata is initially, if you fly normally like this and gradually pull back, then slowly tilt the camera downward and pull back. The cinematic quality is quite good and expectedly. Uh, it's a uh, technique I often use while pulling back and looking at myself, changing to the uh, manual mode here, and then you will be looking at the sky. After that, add a title here, go back to M mode again, and dive down smoothly, smoothly passing over me. In this way, you can capture quite a cool scene. I recommend trying out this filming technique. Also, I used this technique somewhere else. Where was it? Um, it was one representative example of shooting such video in Jeju Island. It's called Paksu Stonewall. So if you see it now, I'm flowing in uh, end mode, normal mode, pulling back to uh, looking at myself like this. By doing this, I can capture everything in one go, which to me adds a lot of cinematic value. And this speed is faster than you might think. So after pulling back like this, uh, diving from here while entering to a manual mode, you can create a quite impressive scenes by diving while passing me. If you try utilizing this technique, you can shoot more impressively. I use this technique when shooting in Yoido as well. So diving from the top of this circle building in Yoido, uh, pulling back all the way and the scenes like this, like that, uh, while looking at me and diving, scenes like this, uh, like that are right here. When you watch YouTube shorts, it's the scene where it was this one. Yeah, it was this scene. When I smoothly fall back again and do another dive passing me, uh, because of this, I can capture cool scenes like this, as I showed you uh, just now by falling back like that. This technique of falling back, and then I used it again in this video also, here in a cut that got a lot of views. If you watch this video, what I did was, is I mixed footage from DJI Mini, FPV, and Avata. So what was really cool here is because of the last scene. I think the reason why the views were good uh, is because of this last scene. And this was seen was also shot with DJ Avata and this was with DJ FPV. This was DJ Avata and going up smoothly diving and then in the next scene and then going through these gaps. These are the great advantages of DJ Avata. So now filming those things passing by me on the side. To be honest, DJ FPV is a bit challenging due to the risk of propeller strikes to me. Right in this scene, watching me in uh, normal mode and smoothly ascending while pulling back. Continuously turning and lifting backward like this allows for capturing such footage. Isn't it pretty cool, isn't it? So, when filming the final ending scene, it's really cool technique. Therefore, applying this shooting style from DJ Avatar. You can create impressive videos. It would be great if you give it a try.
Thus, in a way, you can see these histories of my flight, right? I've flown in the canyons, tried flying over waterfall-like structures, conducted signal tests, filmed in apartment complexes, and even inside model houses. So in a way, these experiences led to the capability to shoot in city, like Yoido shots like this. I didn't just confidently fly at city to shoot in city at some point. Uh, I feel that I was able to shoot these videos because of these accumulative experiences. I gained a bit of confidence that the signal wouldn't break even when go going behind buildings. After, at first, I thought I had to shoot from the rooftop to avoid signal loss. But now, based on those experiences I tried flying in this park, I wonder what would happen if I flew here. Of course, it was somewhat experimental, so just in case that the signal dropped, I set it up to hover in place. Of course, I could use RTH to come back, because if the battery was low, there could be a major incident, so I set it to hover. As now I can fly behind buildings, carefully monitoring the yellow warning line under the goggle screen, observing how the antennas come out and preparing the potential signal loss.